Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is January 17th, 2020, and this is part 21 of my video series, The Mystery of the Beast. Today's video is called The Mark of the Beast and the Lake of Fire. I've been waiting quite a while for this new video. It's been over a month since I did the last video, and I've really been waiting for the unction of the Holy Spirit to to bring this word out. First, I want to give you a little bit of a summary of what I've talked about over the last six months. I've created a playlist on my channel, and uh, you're looking here at the page that is a list of all the videos, 20 already. This is number 21. The mystery of the beast, in summary, the beast is man. That's why in Revelation chapters 12 and 13, you have a picture of a dragon in Revelation 12, and then you have a picture of a beast that rises from the sea in Revelation 13. And that beast that rises from the sea looks exactly like or seems to look exactly like the beast that you see, the dragon that you see in Revelation chapter 12. And why is that? The beast, as I said, is man. And the reason why the beast looks like the dragon and the dragon is Satan is because since the beginning, since Adam and Eve disobeyed God and ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, mankind was sold to Satan. Satan became the ruler of this world at that time. And he has been a hard taskmaster, and he has endeavored to create men in his own image. He always imitates God, and he wants to usurp God usurp God's place. And so what we see in Revelation 13 is a picture of a beast that looks like Satan, full of names of blasphemy and doing horrible things, just like we know Satan does horrible things. We also learned in these videos that God always speaks in parables. In the Gospels, it's made, made very clear that Jesus, whenever he spoke, he always spoke in a parable. Men do not understand what that means. They actually interpret that exactly the opposite of what it means. Men say that the reason Jesus spoke in parables was so that he would make his teaching simpler to understand. He spoke in stories so that people could relate to the story and therefore better understand what he was talking about. And that's exactly wrong. The scriptures make it clear that Jesus spoke in parables in order to hide what he was teaching. In fact, when he was asked about it, he quoted Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, a particular scripture that made it clear that the whole idea was so that the people would not understand what he was saying. And the apostles make it clear that everything that Jesus said was in a parable. Therefore, it was in a, a story. And the idea is that a parable, a story, has prophetic meaning or meaning that conveys the truth of God. Now, if Jesus spoke, always spoke in a parable, that means that the entire Bible itself is written as a parable. That does not mean it is not historically accurate. The Bible is historically accurate, and the things recorded in the historical books, like Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Judges, Joshua, First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles, First and Second Samuel, all of those 
historical events actually happened, but they also convey prophetic meaning. That means that events that we read about, for example, in the New Testament concerning the birth of Jesus himself is a parable. Now think about it. Jesus, when he was born, he's the son of God. You know, what greater king is there? There is no greater king. But yet, God didn't see fit that he would get the best hotel room in Jerusalem. No, they found a stable. And Jesus, when he was born, he was placed in the feeding trough. Now, what is the feeding trough? That's where beasts eat. Beasts eat out of the feeding trough, and Jesus was put into the feeding trough. Well, what does that symbolize? It symbolizes that Jesus is the food for the beast. He's the food for man. And that's what he tells us in John chapter 6. That's when he said, my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. And most of the disciples left him at that point because who can, who can deal with a teaching like that? Who can handle a teaching like that? So if you look at the titles of my videos that I've done, I discuss all of these things. And I begin to also discuss who the heads of the beast, heads of the beast were. And I talk about the various heads that have been in history and we come up to the eighth head of the beast and I reveal that the eighth head of the beast is Donald Trump. Now, the interesting thing is <clears throat> Donald Trump was raised up in order to destroy the deep state. And in these videos, I reveal that the deep state is what the Bible calls Babylon the Great. In Revelation chapter 17, you see that this harlot is riding the beast, okay? The beast is man. The harlot is riding the beast. She is always in control of the beast. Now, what, what does the harlot represent? The harlot represents satanic spiritual empowerment. It's the satanic principle that has empowered man from the beginning, from the time that Adam and Eve sinned. Now understand that that was God's plan. It did not catch God by surprise when Adam and Eve sinned. It was part of his plan. And the plan was to make men in his image. Well, Satan, of course, wants to destroy God's plan. And so what does Satan do? Throughout the history of the world, Satan has done everything that he can to obscure the knowledge of God. Paul says in Romans chapter 1 that men hold the truth in unrighteousness. Men hide the truth. See, you, can't, you cannot find out the truth about many, many things in this world that are extremely important to know. For example, that we live on a flat earth. Now, many of you don't believe that, but you haven't taken the time to really understand whether that's true or not. I took the time four years ago, And I thought, like everybody else who first begins, that of course that's a joke, and of course the earth is a globe. Well, it didn't take me too long to discover that you cannot prove that the earth is a globe. You simply can't prove it. Try. <clears throat> but that's not the only lie. Lie after lie after lie. Casey, who was 
the head of the CIA at the time of Ronald Reagan, when Reagan was president, 1981, said that we will know we have succeeded when everything that the American people believe is false. So for years and years, the powers that be have been feeding us lies. But that should be no surprise. Remember, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul says that the man of lawlessness, when he is revealed, that people, people will follow this lawlessness because they have been deceived, because they love not the truth. And that's exactly where we are as a world, a world that is utterly deceived because we did not love the truth. Donald Trump has forced the deep state to reveal who it is. And it is lawlessness. Look at what the Democrats did in the House of Representatives in the impeachment proceedings. You could not think of a more lawless proceeding than what we saw over the last few months. All with the design to destroy President Trump. Now, any of you who have been keeping up with Q's posts, and you really should, in order to understand what is going on, there are lots of good um, resources on the internet. I recommend Praying Medic, for example. You need to get on Twitter, if you're not, and be become a follower of pray Praying Medic. Uh, there are others that you can find that deal with the Q posts, but uh, I think I have found that Praying Medic is one of the best. Another one, uh, equally as good, if if not better, is the X-22, X-22 report, where he puts out a report daily. And in that report, he tells you what's going on in the world with respect to the government, with respect to Donald Trump, and with respect to the deep state. And he also brings in Q posts and shows how that relates to what's currently going on. Extremely fascinating and insightful. But what Donald Trump has done is he has revealed the man of lawlessness. Now, in a previous video, I show you that the great apostasy that you read about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, it's called apostasy in many Bibles, but the word literally means divorcement. It's a stepping away from a state of being. And what we have seen is a divorcement. Because in Revelation chapter 17, toward the end of that chapter, you see that God puts it in the heart of the beast. And it's led at that time by the eighth head, who is Donald Trump. So God puts it in the heart of Donald Trump to destroy the harlot. Remember from the beginning, he said he was going to destroy the swamp. Okay? That is the great divorcement. Up until that time, it was as if the beast and the harlot were married. You know, the harlot rode the beast, beginning of chapter 17 of Revelation. So it's like, a person riding a horse, always controlling the horse, which way it goes, which way it turns, what it does. And forever, forever, in our paradigm, in our history of the world, the harlot, the satanic principle of government, the satanic spirit has always controlled mankind. But suddenly, we have a president that God has put it into the heart of in order to throw off that satanic control. And that's why you see everything going crazy right now. The man of lawlessness. Those who are still led by the satanic principle. Those who are still led by 
the harlot by Babylon the Great, those who are still in Babylon the Great. See, Babylon the Great is the government of the harlot. Babylon the Great is the deep state. Many, many people who are coming out of Babylon the Great are supporting Donald Trump. They're seeing the abject evil of the deep state. They're seeing the abject evil of the satanic principle. And this is the principle that the Democrats continue to push. How can it get more evil than this? That you pass new laws that will allow abortion of a fully formed infant up to up to the very time of birth. You don't want it kill it right before it comes out. Or as the governor of Virginia says, Northam or something like that, utterly lawless man. And he's a pediatrician. And he says, well, you know, if the baby is born, let's put it aside and keep it comfortable. And then if the mother decides she doesn't want it, then we'll comfortably put it to death. Sick, sick. The Democrats support this kind of a thing. And then just yesterday and the day before, and the di- this week of uh, January, we see these new videos put out by Project Veritas uh, concerning somebody named Kyle, I believe, who works for the Bernie Sanders campaign, who talks about re-education camps, gulags in America for people who need to be re-educated who do not want to go along with the communist agenda of Bernie Sanders and himself. See, he's the arbiter of good and evil. He's the arbiter of of truth. If you don't agree with him, you have to be re-educated. You have to be incarcerated, tortured in order to comply with their evil communist agenda. These are the things that we see now all on the surface. Antifa. Who's the one who, who, who are the ones who always cause the violent confrontations? Always the Democrats and always those associated with them. And they always blame Trump supporters. And the media is always there with them. And so, God is calling his people out of Babylon. And many people have come out now. Unfortunately, there's still a lot of Christians who are part of Babylon who believe that the Hillary Clinton group and the Democrat group really do stand for the rights of the people, for diversity and for letting people be what they want to be. Well, it's a great deception. It's a great deception. Diversity is great unless you're diverse like I am and believe that the things that they want to push down our throats are wrong, that they are evil, that, that the whole transsexual movement is wrong. And, in fact, that the homosexual movement is wrong. And that leads me to the topic today. The mark of the beast and the lake of fire. See, it's not enough. It's not enough to come out of Babylon. There are millions of people now who follow and support Donald Trump who have come out of Babylon but They still have the mark of the beast. Now, I want to say this before I go any further. I support Donald Trump very heartily, very strongly. I will vote for him this year. And I will and I do encourage everyone to vote for him and to stand with him. But you must understand 
Donald Trump is the head of the beast. Just as Nebuchadnezzar was the head of the beast at the time that Daniel received revelation concerning his dreams. But notice this about Daniel. Daniel understood that Nebuchadnezzar was not a righteous man. He understood that Nebuchadnezzar was not a holy man. But he understood that Nebuchadnezzar was God's chosen man. Chosen for that time, just as Donald Trump is chosen for this time. And so Daniel, he always prayed for Nebuchadnezzar and he always wanted the best for Nebuchadnezzar. In the same way, you and I need to support Donald Trump. We need to pray for Donald Trump. And we need to desire the best for Donald Trump. But we need to be sober-minded concerning that. See, Donald Trump makes mistakes concerning morality and concerning things of righteousness. He seems to pretty strongly support the homosexual agenda. But there are many Christians now who do. Christians have been lied to forever by the media. The homosexual agenda has been pushed upon us. We, it, it's been forced upon us to accept it as normal when it's not normal. Supreme Court made marriage of homosexuals the law of the land, and that is a perversion and an abomination before God. And yet, you never hear Donald Trump talk about doing away with that. But you do hear him say things concerning abortion. He speaks out very highly for the life of the unborn. The danger we have today is that we blindly support Donald Trump and all of his positions and views without thinking for ourselves and without being led of the Holy Spirit into righteousness. Let me read you part of the prophecy concerning Donald Trump, this eighth head of the beast. It's at the, toward the end of Revelation 17. As for the beast that was and is not, it is an eighth, but it belongs to the seven and it goes to destruction. This is a riddle and it's a mystery review my video concerning this and let's just uh, find out which one it is number 15 go to video 15 and watch that donald trump is animated by the spirit of cyrus the king of Persia. Even Israel has recognized that, and they made a commem commemorative coin that had both his head on it and Cyrus's head on it. And in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, read that to see what God says concerning his servant Cyrus. But going on, so this beast that was and is not, at the time that John wrote this, that head was not in control. The kingdom of Persia was long gone. However, it belonged to the seven beasts, to the seven heads, because you see seven heads on this beast. But it was the eighth. This head came after the eighth, after the seventh. 
and the seventh was in control for quite a long time. And the ten horns that you saw are ten kings who have not yet received royal power, but they are to receive authority as kings for one hour together with the beast. So there's going to be a short time. These are of one mind, and they hand over their power and authority to the beast. They will make war on the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them, or the lamb will conquer them. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings, and those with him are called and chosen and faithful. Okay, what we need to see here is this. Donald Trump, when he has full control, because he doesn't now, you know, and he's not able to do everything that he wants. Some of the things that he is going to do are going to be contrary to the word of God. And when he makes laws or does things like that, that is making war against the lamb. Okay, that is doing things opposed to Jesus Christ. Okay. But even though that is the case, look at this. Right after he says that, right after John is, says these words, the angel said to me, the waters that you saw where the prostitute is seated are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. And the ten horns that you saw, they and the beast will hate the prostitute. They make war against the lamb, but they hate the prostitute. They hate Babylon the Great. They will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman that you saw is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. There are two cities. There is Old Jerusalem and there is New Jerusalem. And Old Jerusalem corresponds to all of the great cities that we hear about in the, in the Bible. Nineveh, Tyre, Sodom. Babylon, Egypt, Babylon the Great is the great city, the great city that corresponds to the satanic principles, to the satanic spirit. And this has been where most men have dwelled for the entire history of men. But there is another city, and that's the city that we must be pilgrims on the way toward, and that is New Jerusalem. And so, throughout the scripture, we see this warning to not be part of the satanic city. So we're called to come out of Babylon. But again, it doesn't stop there because we have another warning. And that's this. Revelation 13, 17. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Revelation 14, 11. And the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receives the mark of his name. Revelation 15, 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. Revelation 16, 2. And the first angel went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Revelation 19.20 And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, 
with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. In Revelation 24, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. We We can support Donald Trump without worshiping him. We can support Donald Trump without agreeing with all of his ideas. And principles. God has called us to a very narrow path. So the danger for us who have come out of Babylon and now follow Donald Trump, the danger is, do we take the mark of the beast or not? The mark of the beast, 666, man was created on the sixth day. The beast was created on the sixth day. Satan was created on the sixth day. He was the most clever of the beasts that God had created, according to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. 666. Six, man, beast, Satan. The satanic principle. The ways of Satan versus the ways of God. Now, what is this? Am I saying then, by reading these scriptures, is God going to throw Donald Trump into hell? Is God going to throw Donald Trump into eternal torment? What does that say? Revelation 19.20, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. So is there no hope for Donald Trump? Well, we need to understand the fire of God. Let's turn to Jeremiah 23. Critical chapter. You really need to have... Jeremiah 23 in your memory and read it often. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and hear his word? Who has? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Who has? Jeremiah 23 verse 18. Who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to the word and listened? Have you? Have I? Verse 19, Behold, the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. Remember at the very beginning of Donald Trump's presidency, he said this is the calm before the storm. The storm still hasn't hit. Do you realize that? We're three years now in, and the storm has not yet hit. The storm is coming. And what is the storm? The storm is the day of wrath. The day of wrath. But the scripture says that wrath has not been reserved for the people of God. Wrath was reserved for the enemies of God, 
Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. We are entering now the day of wrath. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. These are the latter days. We've all been promised great revival now for years. Many thought it was going to happen immediately after Trump was elected, all the way back to 2017. And here we are now, 2020. Hasn't happened yet. Verse 21, Jeremiah 23, 21. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. The false prophet has been prophesying forever. Most of what Christians and the world hear is false prophecy, and it's not from the heart and mind of God. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds, but they did not do that. This is how you know a true prophet from a false prophet. The prophet of God speaks the word of God. The prophet of God will turn you from your evil ways. The prophet of God will not coddle you in your sins. The prophet of God will not say, oh, it's okay that you go out and you whoremonger. You go out and you steal. The false prophet will not say that everything you do is okay. The false prophet will insist upon the word of God. He will insist upon the teachings of of God to the law and to the testimony Isaiah said Isaiah chapter 8 if they do not speak according to this word is it is because there is no light in them to the law and to the testimony the law the law the overcomers of God sing the song of Moses and the song of the lamb the law was given through Moses Grace and truth, the law, came through Jesus Christ. In Jesus, mercy and truth have kissed. Grace and truth have kissed. Jesus is the food for men. Jesus is the one who teaches us all things, teaches us truth, teaches us mercy. The overcomer, the one who conquers the mark of the beast, who will not take the mark of the beast. He learns the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. If you want to read the song of Moses, then go to Deuteronomy. The very end of chapter 31, it says, Then Moses spoke the words of this song, until they were finished in the ears of all the assembly of Israel. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. May my teaching drop as the rain, and my speech distill as the dew, like gentle rain upon the tender grass, and like showers upon the herb. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness, which means truth, and without iniquity, just and upright is he. They have dealt corruptly with him. They are no longer his children because they are blemished. They are a crooked and twisted generation. And go on and read the song song of Moses, wonderful song, and it's prophetic and it speaks of the time we live in today. And now going back to Jeremiah 23, Verse 21, I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people. But they did not proclaim God's words to his people. They have spoken lies in the name of the Lord. 
and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal? Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? Is not my word like fire? Is not my word like fire? Going back to Deuteronomy chapter 33 this time. So Moses' song comes to an end. And then chapter 33, he blesses Israel. This is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the people of Israel before his death. He said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned from Seir, Upon us. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came from the ten thousands of holy ones with flaming fire at his right hand. Yes, he loved his people. All his holy ones were in his hand. His holy ones are the Kodeshim. And notice this the flaming fire is in his right hand. The holy ones are in his right hand. The holy ones are the flame of fire. The holy ones are the fire of God. Let's go to Daniel. Chapter 7. As I looked... Thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames. The wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came out from before him. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. God's throne, fiery flames, its wheels, burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came out from before him. We are looking here at Jesus. Isaiah 33, another verse to know. Thirty-three, fourteen. the sinners in Zion are afraid. Trembling has seized the godless. Sinners in Zion, sinners who call themselves by the name of the Lord, sinners who say they are Christians but don't walk like it. The sinners in Zion are afraid, trembling has seized the godless. Who, can, who among us can dwell with the consuming fire? Who among us can dwell with everlasting burnings? That's the question. Here's the answer. He who walks righteously and speaks uprightly, who despises the gain of oppressions, who shakes his hands lest they hold a bribe, who stops his ears from hearing a bloodshed and shuts his eyes from looking on evil. He will dwell on the heights. His place of defense will be the fortresses of rocks. His bread will be given him. His water will be sure. Your eyes will behold the king in his beauty. 
So who is it that can dwell with consuming fire? Who can dwell with everlasting burnings? He who walks righteously and speaks uprightly. In Revelation chapter 19, you have the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then right after that, and we are very close to this time. Then I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire and on his head are many diadems and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe, dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. Who is this? Jesus, of course. And the armies of heaven arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. The armies of heaven arrayed in fine linen. That's the Kodeshim. That's the people of God, the holy ones, the glorified saints of God, the overcomers. From his mouth, from Jesus' mouth, comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. All the scripture is a parable. And yet when we read it, we take this literally. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword. Does a sword really come out of Jesus' mouth? What is that talking about? It's his word. The word that I speak will judge you, Jesus said to those who heard him when he lived here on earth as a mere man. And the rod of iron. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. That's the word of God. That's how he strikes down the nations. That's how he converts the people is by his word. And he rules them with a rod of iron, the iron of God. The iron is the law. The iron is the word. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God, the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and with a loud voice he called to all the birds that fly directly overhead, Come, gather for the great supper of God to eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of their horses and riders, and the flesh of all men, both free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against him who was sitting on the horse and against his army. And the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet, who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped its image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur, and the rest were slain by the sword. That's the word of God. And the lake of fire that burns with sulfur, what is that? It is the word. Is not my word like fire? And like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces, like the rod of iron? All of the word is a parable. It's a story that tells us prophetic truth. The word of God is coming in power and glory. Right now, we are not walking in that power, and we do not see the glory. But we are still called to not take the mark of the beast. Come out of Babylon. Believe in Jesus Christ and put away the things of the devil, the things of the deep state, the things of Babylon the Great. Come out of her. But when you do, don't take the mark of the beast. The promise of overcoming is for us now, today. But the hope is this, the lake of fire is not eternal torment in burning, flaming fire as we have been wrongly taught 
for thousands of years. False teaching pervades the doctrine of the church. Almost all their doctrine is false. Hell itself is thrown into the lake of fire. Hades, the place of the dead. The lake of fire is for your purging, is for your cleansing. It is for you to come into agreement with God so that you can then get on the right way with the rest of your life. The lake of fire. The overcomers do not have a part in the lake of fire because they submitted to the fire of God in this life. When you understand the word of God, when you really understand the scripture, you realize the scripture was written only for those. And that's why you have throughout the scripture this idea of the elect and this idea of predestined and so on. And why it appears that there are so many who just simply are going to be burning in hell forever. The Bible was written to those who are willing to walk in God's ways in this evil environment, when it is so incredibly difficult, when every single sin is available to you nonstop, daily, can you turn away from it now? Can you put your sin, can, can you put your sin away now? Can you let the fire of God apply to you now? Then you overcome. Then you receive the crown of life, the highest, the highest prize for those who follow God. And it's not for everyone. The scripture makes it clear that it's not for everyone. But it doesn't mean that everyone else is going to be burning forever in molten fire. Our God is a merciful, loving Father who died for everyone. God so loved the world. The world. And John teaches us, do not love the world or the things of the world. But yet Jesus died for the world. See? The world has not yet received Jesus. Only the overcomers have received Jesus and have walked according to his way and have allowed the fire of God to burn them deeply in this life. So that's, that's our challenge now. Do not take the mark of the beast, even though you support Donald Trump. I support Donald Trump. I will vote for Donald Trump. I love what he's doing in destroying Babylon the Great. He's doing the work of God. He is chosen. God chose him to do this work. God has anointed him to do this work. And I bless him and pray for him that he will continue to succeed in this work. And let us do the same. And let us walk supporting him without taking the mark of the beast. Let us continue to speak forth the word of God, the truth, and righteousness.